like a ray of sun here in Fishville, hoping the pumps from above is a blessing. My feedback thousand with fish and bread, fish tails, ooh. Every day they're out there setting the club, ooh. Tails of pigs and mercy and forgiveness. to know your name he's not going to talk to you <laughs> right up here tell him we'll take him from here jonathan yeah. join me get okay, a good seat over here hey maybe i could join you and try and work out how this is done <laughs> good thinking
Sean Penn, ladies and gentlemen. That's quite something. Hey City Kids, I have a amazing story for you. It's a fish story. Um, it's one that I can't honestly take credit for. It's not my fish story, but when we were in Colorado fishing for trout on a river, um, our friend Steve uh, was talking about this fish that he had on his line and he said, this fish is huge but it got away. I almost had it reeled in and it, it got away and he was using a certain type of lure or bait to catch the fish. And this fish was so big, he said, that it just broke his line and snapped his line. So we kept fishing and fishing and fishing and my brother feels a bite and he starts pulling this fish in. He starts reeling and reeling and reeling it in and um, he got it in and he said it wasn't that hard of a, a struggle to pull this fish in. and. It wasn't that big of a fish. It was kind of small. I think it was about four ounces. And he pulled this trout in and they they started to um, fillet this fish a little bit to, to open it up and so we could eat it later. And they found the lure that our friend Steve had been using. So he had told us this big fish had taken his lure and taken broken his line. And here my brother caught this itty bitty fish big enough to eat, but still small. And it had his lure inside it. And so we got a good chuckle and got to tease Steve about that for a while because um, he told us this big fish story that ended up not being true because it was just a city bitty fish. So that's our fish story for today.
Hey City Kids, so I have this amazing Bible story for you today and there are two things that we can learn from this Bible story today and I'm super excited to share this with you. This is a story that's not told a whole lot and it's super powerful and important and it has to do with fish since we are doing fish tales. So I'm so excited to share this information with you, share this story with you today as we get into our Bible and um, we get to read the story. So our story today is found in Matthew 24, oh, I'm sorry, Matthew 17, tw verses 24 through 27. So I have my Bible here that I'm going to read this to you. When they came to Capernaum, the collectors of the two drachma tax went up to Peter and said, does your teacher not pay tax? He said, yes. And when he came into the house, Jesus spoke to him first saying, what do you think, Simon? From whom do kings of earth take tax? From their sons or from others? And when he said from others, Jesus said to him, then the sons are free. Jesus said to him, then, however, not to give offense to them, go to the sea and cast a hook and take the first fish that comes up. And when you open its mouth, you'll find a shekel. Take that and give it to them for me and for yourself. So there's two things that are so important here that we can learn. So first of all, these guys were trying to catch Jesus and they didn't like Jesus. So they were trying to find a way to arrest Jesus for not paying his taxes. So they said, does Jesus pay taxes? So Jesus knew something and he, Peter didn't even have to say anything to him. Jesus knew what they were doing. And so Jesus says, hey, do, who, who pays taxes to the king? And is it their sons or is it other people? And Peter said, you know, it's other people. And Jesus said, well, I'm the son of God. And so if sons don't pay taxes, I'm free. And you know what's super cool about all this is you and I, we're, we're called sons of God. We're called brothers and sisters in Christ. We are, Jesus and God call us sons and daughters. So we are free. We don't have to pay to be uh, Christians. We don't have to do any of that stuff. God has called us to be free. Isn't that exciting that we don't have to do anything necessarily to be Christians, to be saved in Christ because God did it for us. So that's the first lesson that we have is that we are free with Jesus. The other thing is he didn't want to make people mad. Jesus didn't want to make anyone else mad and he didn't want to make the tax collectors or, or offend anyone by not paying taxes, even though he didn't need to. So what he did instead was he provided money for us. He provided that. He said, go fish and you'll find a coin in the the fish's mouth. Could you imagine? That's pretty like silly, right? Like go fish and you'll find money in the fish. If that was true, everybody be out fishing, right? So I wish that still happened today, but God provided, he put a fish or coin in the fish's mouth. And when they caught that fish, they were able to pay both Jesus's taxes and Peter's. God always provides for us. When we have worries or things that we need, Jesus will always be there to provide for us. He'll always have things for us to provide and that we don't have to worry. So two main takeaways here. One, we're free. God allows us to freely worship him. He's paid the debt for us with his, with Jesus Christ dying on the cross for us. We don't need to worry about that because we are now sons and daughters of the God in heaven. As long as we have asked Jesus to forgive us of our sins and come into our heart. The second thing is, God will always provide for us when we're in need. And he also doesn't want us to go out trying to make people mad. He didn't want, being Jesus, he didn't want to make people mad. He didn't want to offend them. He still spoke the truth and sometimes the truth will offend people, but he didn't want to go out of his way to make people mad. So instead he found a way to provide so that no one would be upset with them for not paying their taxes. Guys, I hope you are, are good at home if you're at home and if you're in church being great listeners. I hope that you're watching these videos and learning about Jesus because just because City Kids Church isn't open yet, 
there's still no reason that you shouldn't be um, learning about God at home and in church in the pews. All right, guys, praying for you. God bless. See you next week. This is a 66 picks mixed up into one. The book's about God, who he is and what he's done. It's the Holy Bible, y'all, with God's truth packed out inside. It's a life of Christ to hide in your heart and in your mind. Old Testaments are set up for the big event. When Jesus crashed the scene with a new arrangement. It's history, his story, whose story, God's story. Let it blow up all the pages that this show gone off. Let his word explode from this video into your life. Papa Fish, want to hear a joke? Sure, Charlie. What is it? Where do fish keep their money? Hmm. I don't know where. In a river bank. Get it? A river bank? <laughs> <laughs> Good one, Charlie. You know, that joke reminds me of a day when the most unexpected thing happened. What happened? Tell me, Papa, please. It started out like any other day. I was just swimming with my guppies, swapping fish stories, having a few laughs, when suddenly we heard someone talking. <gasps> it was a human! And every fish knows humans eat guys like me for dinner. Then what? We all got quiet. We wanted to hear what the human was saying. He was talking to himself, saying something about catching a fish. Oh, that's never good. Oh, no. Oh, yes. The man's name was Peter. He was talking about following a leader, some guy named Jesus. They needed money to pay a tax. I was confused. I kept thinking, you need money, you go to a bank. You don't go fishing, am I right? You're right, Papa Fish. You bet your bubbles I'm right. So I told my buddies to chill and swim low, thinking this guy will get out of our gills in no time, just as soon as he remembers to stop off at the bank. Suddenly, something caught in my throat. <gasps> I couldn't get a word out. My mouth was full, and I wasn't happy. Now, don't get me wrong. I enjoy a good snack, just like the next fish. But this was no snack. I didn't know what it was. It was hard and flat and way too big to just swallow. I was trying to spit the thing out so I could see what it was when... What happened? What happened? Suddenly, I was yanked by the mouth. It was that human, Peter, pulling me out of the water. Did you see him, Papa Fish? Did you see him? A real human? Patience, little one. Let me tell the story. Before I knew it, this Peter guy and me were face to face, nose to nose. And I'm thinking, oh no, now I'm dinner for sure. Just then, Peter grinned at me really big. I thought maybe he was trying to be friendly. So I tried to grin back, but my mouth was too full. Then Peter stuck his fingers in my mouth and pulled out money. It was a coin, a big silver one. Peter laughed and said, Jesus was right. He always is. Then he tossed me back into the water. He let me go. Whew. Papa Fish, I am so glad. You're not the only one. My friends were so excited to see me back in the water, they started to shout. I said, shh, keep it down. He's still talking. From what I could hear, it seems Jesus had told Peter to go fishing and look in the mouth of the first fish he caught. That was me and he'd find the money they needed to pay the tax. Sure enough, it happened just like Jesus said it would. I know, I know, it sounds crazy like some old fish tale, right? Trust me, no one was more surprised than I was. That's a great story, Papa Fish. Thanks, Charlie. And I learned something. Oh yeah, what did you learn? If I ever need anything, anything at all, I'm gonna ask Jesus and then do what he tells me to do. Nothing fishy about that, huh, Papa? Nothing fishy at all, little one. Now, swim along or you'll be late for school. And now it's time for Silly Songs with Letty, the part of the show where Letty comes out and sings a silly song. Got the munchies on that fateful night, around 8 o'clock. So I phoned in a pizza for delivery. 
but I had a feeling that something wasn't right because I waited for hours and no pizza. I set the table with a paper plate. How would I know that it'd be late? It's taken so long, where could it be? Had a 30 minute guarantee. Pizza Angel, please come to me. Tomato sauce and cheese so gooey. Pizza Angel, I'm on my knees. You're my number one pie from Sicily. Did it get lost? Did they just forget? Should I have ordered on the internet? Ready for dinner, now I'm not so sure. I think my soda's room temperature. Pizza Angel, please come to me. Tomato sauce and cheese so gooey. Pizza Angel, I'm on my knees. And don't forget to add my favorite. door in expectation, but it was the saddest sight I ever saw. I could still smell the sweet aroma of deep dish goodness, but the box was empty. Your house number was broken, so I couldn't find you. I was getting kind of hungry, so I ate, ate your pizza. So, sorry about that. You don't need to tip me or anything. Please come to me. I'll never forget you, Pizza Angel. <laughs>